Will CBS Radio Mystery Theater present? They say diamonds are a girl's best friend. Of course, when they say it, they refer to what diamonds represent. Wealth, power, luxury. However, there can be a time when a diamond, a hard and glittering diamond, can acquire a personality. And yes, even life of its own. Of course, where you have life, you may also find death. Are there any more chops? Yep. Well, share them. Nope. It's time we had a talk. You can't hide behind that wall of food any longer. What are you talking about? You can't fortify yourself behind a hill of flesh anymore. You've got to face the world. And do what? I don't know. Rob, kill, swindle, whatever's necessary to get on in this life. <laughs> Mystery drama Diamond Doughty was written especially for the Mystery Theatre by Sam Dan and stars Terry Keane. And I'll be back shortly with Act One. What did a certain Mr. Lewis say? Those long, dull, monotonous years of middle aged prosperity. Or middle-aged adversity. Our excellent campaigning weather for the devil. Yes. The devil's always lurking about, isn't he? Ever on the alert for an opportunity. Doesn't he ever take any time off? Well, the year is about 1880. We are in a small western frontier town. In the lobby, such as it is, of the Excelsior Hotel. The Excelsior is an extremely accommodating establishment which caters to a great many needs. You can get a room, you can get a drink, a meal, a game of chance, and even the companionship of a sympathetic lady. It is late of the Saturday afternoon, and the place is going, as they say, at full blast. Suddenly, someone notices a woman standing in the door. Pretty girl. Oh, yes, girl. Girl. There is quiet. She is indeed a different sort of woman. She is perhaps in her late twenties, with large and luminous blue eyes. Spun golden hair seems to form a halo about her beautiful, delicate face. But she seems to be troubled and tired, frail, travel stained, and vulnerable. Ma'am, are you all right? I, I'm so... Uh, here, now, you let me have that bag. No, no but uh, nobody will take this bag from me. Do you hear? Nobody. Uh, now, ma'am, you be careful with that pistol. Now, let everybody be careful. You, you don't look so good, ma'am. Now, a drink of water, huh? Water. Please, yes. Uh, uh, Jerry, uh, get her a glass of water. Okay. It's gone as so heavy. Uh, somebody catch her. She's fainting. Uh -huh. no, no, easy now. You, no, yeah, set her down on this chair right here. Now, one of you girls, uh, you run upstairs and get some smelling sauce or something. You just set it on down right there beside her. Oh, I can't get it loose. She's clutching it for dear life. Mm. Why? Why did we come here, Bobby? Why? I don't want to be rich. I just want to be happy, and I want to be in love. She is out of her mind. Well, who's got that water? Bobby. Where'd you go, Bobby? Oh, yeah, now, you just drink this, ma'am. Now. Now. What? D drink the water. What? Now, now easy, what? easy ma'am, easy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. No, don't, don't take it away. Oh, it's been so long. And yet that's why you have to go slow now. Now, that's plenty. Oh, please, more. No, oh, no, that's all for now. Now, you can't drink it all at once. What? What place is this? You're safe and sound in the Excelsior Hotel, Drywell, Arizona. 
My bag. Where's my bag? You're still holding on to it. My gun. Now, now, somebody, somebody pick up that Colt 44. Hmm. Smells like it's been fired recent. Oh. Hey. Hey, you got six empty shells in there. What happened? My horse, I think I left him outside. It's my horse. Uh, uh, Tommy, go on out and bring him around to the stable. Oh, thank you. You're all so kind. You're so generous. Well, ma'am, you're in God's country now. <laughs> you ain't back east any longer. How, how did you know I was from the east? Well, ma'am, I, I guess the same way you could tell I'm from the west. <laughs> Just as soon as I open my mouth. <laughs> oh, my name's Joe Selleck, and I own this hotel. Uh, I, I'm Harriet Truesdale. Miss or uh, Mrs.? Uh, Mrs. Uh, I'm a widow. Well, uh, I am genuinely sorry to hear that. My husband was killed three days ago. Where? How? Uh, I, I just can't talk about it, not yet. I, I have to get some rest, some sleep. Do you have a room? Oh, we surely do. Uh, Ed, give Mrs. Tuesdale number seven ahead of the stairs. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, now, I'll have to apologize in advance for the noise, Miss Tuesdale. You know, this gets to be kind of noisy place on Saturday night. Oh, that's all right. I haven't slept in three days and three nights. I'll sleep. Uh, Mary Lou, you want to escort Miss Tuesdale here upstairs and help her out, huh? You all come with me, honey. Oh, wait. I have to do something first. I have to do something. Bobby uh, told me to do something. What did Bobby tell me? Uh, well, oh, the diamonds. The diamonds? Which? Well, which diamonds, ma'am? Well, Bobby put them in a... Well, just before he died, Bobby put them in... Oh, in here. You mean that sack's got diamonds in it? Safeguard those diamonds, he said. So a safe. Yes, I must put them in a safe so that Carling and Olsen can't steal them. Carling and Olsen? You mean Bud Carling and Squant Olsen? Why, there's a reward out for them. Do you know where they are? Yes. Well, come on, let's get the sheriff and form a posse. Where are they? They... They're dead. Huh? Dead? Near the mine. Which mine? Well, how do you know they're dead? How do I know? Uh, yes, ma'am, how do you know? I killed them. You killed Bud Carlin and Squant Olson? With the Colt 44, with Bobby's gun. I killed them both. How? No. No, no, I can't talk about it, not now. Please, I'm so tired. And I'm so frightened. Uh, Mary Lou, uh, have her upstairs. Huh? You all come with me, honey. No, not until I keep my promise to Bobby. He said, safeguard the diamonds. Your diamonds are safe, Miss Tuesday. No, they're after me. Who's after you? Bud Carling and Squid Olsen. But, but didn't you just say you killed them? Did I? The, the gun. Well, the, Bobby's gun. Yes. It's empty. It's empty. Well, ma'am, I told you it was empty. I must have emptied it. Yes, now I remember. I surprised them. I pointed this gun at them, and I kept pulling the trigger and pulling the trigger till it just clicked empty. I, I, I killed them. I confess I killed them. Oh, will I hang? Well, ma'am, the governor of the territory will give you a reward. You see, we had pitched our tent right near the mine on the claim, and he had gone out. Bobby had gone out to dig, and he had left the gun inside the tent with me. I, could, could I have some water? My head is starting to uh, ache. Sure now, but not too much. Oh, thank you. Now, they... They followed us, Olsen and Carling, and they... they just shot him down. Yes? They were searching through his pockets, so, you see, they didn't see me. I came crawling out of the tent, and I just started to shoot. I didn't stop shooting until the gun was... The gun was... Now, 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 don't you oh, worry, no. ma'am. Everything's going to be all right. Now, now, you just let one of the girls help you get upstairs. Oh. Uh, Mary Lou? You all come with me, honey. Now, you get some rest, and you're just going to feel... No, fine. first, 
Frick, I must safeguard the diamonds. But like I told you, Miss Truesdale, them diamonds are absolutely safe. Now, nobody's going to steal them. But how do I know? You're asking me to trust you, aren't you? Well, I guess I am. Well, three days ago, I would have trusted you. Three days ago, I would have trusted anybody, everybody. But now, all I trust is this. Bobby's Colt 44. And I can't even trust it till I... Till I... Will somebody please lend me six cartridges? Now, 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 ma'am, there is no need. There is every need. I learned about this world. I learned a lesson I'll never forget. Because it was written in blood. Now, will somebody sell me six cartridges? Uh. Well, all right, I'd consider it an honor, ma'am, if you'd take him from me. Oh, thank you, sir. You are a gentleman. You see, these are my friends. My true friends. All right. Now I'm ready for anything. For anybody. Sir, do you have a safe in this hotel? Safe? Well, no, but I got a drawer in my desk that I can lock. A drawer. Well, yeah, you can hold on to the key. No, but I need a safe, a big iron safe. Is there a bank? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the farmer, cattlemen's, and miners. All right, I'll go there right now. Uh, uh, well, you can't. Why not? Well, it's closed. Closed? Well, it's Saturday night, and he'll be closed until Monday morning. Yeah, but he can't be closed. Well, oh, them are the hours for regular business, ma'am. This isn't regular business. Who's the banker? John Manning. All right, call him on the telephone. The what? The telephone. You've heard of the telephone? Well, no, ma'am, I, I can't say as I have. Do you really mean there's no one here that's ever heard of the telephone? What is a telephone, ma'am? Yeah, it was invented a few years ago by a man named Bell, and you can uh, talk over wires. I don't believe it. It works. Well, now, maybe it does, and maybe it don't, but... The... Well, we ain't got none of them out here yet. I must see this Mr. Manning. Uh, where does he live? You mean you want to go over there now? I don't have a moment to lose. But you can't do it. Why not? Well, because right now he's sitting down to his supper. And I tell you, ma'am, you don't disturb Big John Manning in the midst of a meal. I mean, you just don't. I will wait till he's finished. Uh, Miss Tuesdale, Big John sits down to his supper at 6 o'clock. And he don't get up until midnight. Then I'll talk to him at midnight. But he won't talk to you. Why not? Because one second past midnight, it'll be Sunday, and Big John will not talk about business on the Sabbath. Where does he live? Uh, that, that's the house. No, we'll see. Uh, ma'am, oh, you just listen to me. Now, you Where's the sure? doorbell? Oh, here. Uh, ma'am, oh, ma'am, you just hadn't ought to be doing this. Yes. Is this the home of John Manning, uh, the banker? What? Yes. But it's Joseph Sillick and Tom Bowen and Hank and... But the whole town's here. Why? Is Mr. Manning in? I have business to transact with him. Oh, no. Oh, no. He will not talk about business at home. Will you tell him it's a matter of life? Oh, Dad, I can't tell him anything. Not while he's eating his supper. Are you his wife? Yes, ma'am. But even I won't disturb him while he's digesting his food. You won't? Well, I will. Now, ma'am, you can't come in. Please, ma'am. Step aside. Please. Now, you can't go in there. You can't. Mr. John Manning? No. Who are you? Well? Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. But I have never seen anyone... Eat like that. Now, madam, who are you? All that food piled on the table. It's only set for one. Madam, what is your name? Uh, my name is Mrs. Harriet Truesdale. And what is the meaning of this unseemly interruption? I'm here on a matter of business. Call at my office Monday morning, promptly at 9 a.m. But, sir... Good evening to please, you. Please, sir, forgive me for interrupting you. I could never forgive you. Now, have the goodness to leave. No, not till you hear me out. I have in this bag 100 diamonds. Now, each oh, is worth at least $1,000. I own a mine on which can be found hundreds, 
and for all I know, thousands like them. I require the services of a banker, not on Monday morning, but at this very moment. Now tell me, sir, are you that banker? My dear Mrs. Truesdale, I am completely at your service. <laughs> They say money talks, but diamonds shout. Our Mrs. Harriet Truesdale came into Dry Well, Arizona one evening alone, frightened and friendless. Two of those conditions have already been altered. While she still may be frightened, she is obviously no longer alone and friendless. But other changes are in store, quite a few. And some shall occur in Act Two, shortly. to think of the Wild West as a particularly American experience. But wasn't it really a variation on an older theme with its heroes and heroines, good guys and bad guys? Wasn't it all very much like the days of chivalry in Europe? While the Hotel Excelsior in Drywell, Arizona could hardly be mistaken for the court of King Arthur, still, wasn't Mrs. Harriet Truesdale a damsel in distress? And wasn't every silver miner and cowboy willing and anxious to be her champion? What is it that you would have me do for you, Mrs. Tuesday? Mr. Manning, I want you to place these diamonds in your safe at once. My dear Mrs. Tuesday, your slightest wish is my strictest command. This safe, made of the finest stainless steel, Mrs. Tuesday, was especially constructed for our needs by the largest company in the world. Well, just put the diamonds inside, please. It comes all the way from Denver. Take them from me. I shall give you a receipt. Well, please, let me see you place them in the safe and lock the door. Of course, a receipt is hardly necessary since the whole town is outside gaping and gawking at this transaction. Put them away, yes, please. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> And now the door. That couldn't withstand the volley from a battery of howitzers. Cheryl swing shut. The lock to its only eye. I know the combination is turned. And the deed is done. Oh, Bobby. Bobby, darling. I did just as you told me. Oh, now. Now I simply must just sleep. Sleep. Uh, Mary Lou, now you and the girls, now you take her back to the hotel and put her to bed. You all come with me, honey. Well, good morning, honey. Oh. Oh, is it morning already? Yes, but not the morning you think it is. It's the following morning. I swear, honey, you were that done in, you slept twice around the clock. Oh, no. Yes. And now you're thinking today's Sunday. Uh, and it isn't? No, ma'am. It's Monday. Oh, my goodness. I have to get up. Why? Oh, first have some breakfast. See? I brought you some coffee and oh. bacon and wheat cakes. Goodness, I am starved. <laughs> you know, you're quite a little lady, Miss Truesdale, you know? Well, why? What did I do? Well, the way you went and faced everyone down. And those are all tough hombres. I mean, especially that fat John Manning. Mary Lou, hmm. shall I tell you a secret? I was petrified. I never spoke like that to anybody. And it's just that... I don't know. I guess I was out of my head. Oh, yeah. Oh, you had a bad time. Well, I really don't want to think about it. Just poor Bobby. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, so honey. Why did we have to come out here? You know, we'll make millions, he said. I suppose now we will from that mine. But you see, he won't ever spend a penny of it. Well, I guess them things just can't be helped. Why didn't we stay home in Philadelphia? I could have taught music. Why did he feel driven to... Oh, well, there's no use of that now. How am I ever going to manage alone? You know something, Miss Truesdale. 
You're managing pretty good as it is. What have I done? Well, just to begin, you gunned down them two desperados. I was out of my head. And then, of course, for me, the real brilliant thing you done was the way you went about getting them diamonds into Fat John Manning's safe. What did I do that was so... Oh, look. Had you gone to see old John all alone without no one knowing and giving him that sack of diamonds, well... Well, what? He might have stolen them from you. Stolen? Are you saying he's a thief? Well, is he or isn't he? Well, it ain't always that clean cut. But but he's such a, a honorable-looking man. Huh? Looks. Oh, and that Joe Selleck. He wouldn't mind trying to find a way to separate you from them diamonds, neither. I find that impossible to believe. Listen, anything you can think of ain't impossible. But the way you worked it, you done the entire transaction in front of the whole town. Everybody's seen them diamonds. Everybody knows where they are and how they got there. So, you're safe. Good morning, Mrs. Trudale. Come about the safekeeping of your diamonds? I'm sure they're secure enough, Mr. Manning. Uh... May I inquire as to your plans? Is there a telegraph office nearby? Yes, 20 miles south. The railroad station at Sadler's Gulch. Well, I would like to send a wire. The stagecoach leaves at noon every day. And I'm sure the driver would accommodate you. Would you be good enough to handle it for me? Why, it would be my pleasure. Thank you. I wish to send a wire to a Mr. Edmund Napier. Uh, That's N-A-P-I-E-R. Yes. At 21 Delray Street uh, in San Francisco. Uh, Please come to Drywell, Arizona to appraise diamond samples as per agreement... With my husband. All right, I have that. I am sending $500 for expenses and partial payment of fee. Oh, and signed Harriet Tuesday. Very well. This should be wired from Sadler's Gulch this very afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Manning. Now, uh, who, uh, who is this Mr. Napier? Oh, Professor Napier is a leading authority on diamonds and precious stones. Ooh. He emigrated here from South Africa. South Africa? Oh, my goodness, I understand that has become a virtual El Dorado for diamonds. Oh, yes. He was quite famous back there. That's how Bobby heard of him. And your husband knew him? Well, poor Bobby, he was a geologist. He heard of the fantastic diamond discoveries in South Africa, and he said to me, why, Harriet, it's the same kind of desert terrain we have in the American Southwest. Why, aren't there diamonds all over Arizona and New Mexico and California? So he started a correspondence with Professor Napier, and they became friends. Uh, how long should it take the professor to arrive from San Francisco? I'd say a week, uh, perhaps less. I hope the time won't hang heavy on your hands, Mrs. Trudeau. Well, it doesn't really matter. Without Bobby, there isn't any time. Are there any more chops? Yep. Well, serve them. Nope. What are you saying, Jessica? I'm saying it's time we had a talk, John. About what? About the future. What about it? Well, from where I'm sitting, it looks as if we don't have one. Jessica, what has gotten into you? I never heard you talk like this. I know. It sounds strange to me, too. But it has to be said. John, we are on our way to the poorhouse. Jessica... Are you feeling well? I'm overstating the case, but not by much. You and Joe Selleck, the two of you, you bet on dry well. You've already lost that bet. The railway went to Sadler's Gulf. Now, see here, Jessica. One by one, the silver mines are playing out. There's not enough grass for cattle or even sheep. There's not enough rain for farming. In ten years, maybe less. 
This is going to be a ghost town. Yes, sir. You are unnecessarily alarmed. You took all my money, John. You invested it in this town. Well, this town is doomed. Well, you have absolutely no idea about how business should be run. And will you please bring out the rest of the chops? Nope. Nope. You can't hide behind all that food any longer. It won't protect you. No, sir. Not when the crash comes. So what are you going to do? Uh, what can I do? There's a fortune in diamonds in your safe. Now, what plans do you have for them? What plans could I have? You mean you haven't even thought about it? Yes, I've thought about it. And? Nothing. What about Joe Selleck? What ideas does he have? I haven't said anything to Joe Selleck. Has he said anything to you? No. Well, don't you think it's time the two of you started talking? About what? Somewhere. Not far from here. There's a field or a mine that's full of diamonds. Now, why can't you get your hands on them? I am trying think. Well, think faster. Think harder. Who do you have to outwit? Some silly little slip of a woman? Hey, hey, John Manny, are you suggesting that we attempt to steal this poor widow woman's property? I'm not suggesting we attempt. I'm suggesting we succeed, Joe. You know... I always suspected you were a thief in your heart, John. I may well have been. It's just that till now, honesty was the most useful fallacy. But the fact is, if we do not succeed in separating this lady from her property, we will not survive. Well, uh, I'm game. Just tell me how. There must be a key to this thing somewhere. Uh, oh, oh uh, uh, good morning, Miss Tuesdale. Good morning, Mr. Selleck, Mr. Manning. Why, <laughs> good morning. Where are you bound for this beautiful morning, may I ask? I just thought I'd take a little ride. Before you do, uh, may I inquire, what are your plans uh, for the mine? I hope to sell it. You mean you don't choose to operate the place yourself? Oh, what do I know about mines or diamonds? And besides, my heart wouldn't be in it. Well, now, if you plan to sell, uh, perhaps uh, we could form a syndicate locally. Oh, that would be fine. Now, uh, what do you suppose might be a fair price for the property? Well, that's why I'm waiting for Mr. Edmund Napier. He can judge the grade of the diamonds and determine the value of the fields, you see. At least that was what Bobby thought. Yes, 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 yes. Sounds like an eminently sensible idea. I'll see you gentlemen later on. Of course. Good morning, Mrs. Tuesday. Good morning. Well, John, we better start a thinking. I know. Now, the longer we wait, the harder it's going to be, especially after this Napier fella gets here and tells her how valuable the place is. What did you say? <laughs> I know, I know what you said. Of course. That's the key. What's the key? Napier. He's the key. He is? How? Now, uh, look here. Suppose Napier were to look at the gems and say they were of inferior quality. Not worth the trouble. Yes. Mm -hmm. I suppose she would release the rights to the property for a song. But why should Napier come to such a conclusion? Well, he might if we ask him to. Oh? You see, Miss Tuldale doesn't know this Professor Napier. She doesn't? She says she never met him. Her late husband only corresponded with him. Ah, uh -huh, I see. Uh -huh. Then we could find the Professor Napier of our own. Couldn't we? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Now, all we need is a very smooth confidence operator. And I have just a man in mind. Uh, good. And I think I know where I can find him, too. Now, wait. What is it? Now, now we may have a problem. Now, now, the real professor may show up in the middle of everything and spoil the show. That's impossible. I've already taken care of that. 
John Manning, I never knew you went in for any rough stuff. That wasn't necessary. He can't show up because I didn't send the telegram. Is that what he did? Or didn't do? What is that passage from the book? A certain man went from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. Look at our own Mrs. Harriet Tuesdale. She has certainly fallen into what can only be described as a nest of vipers. And the worst kind at that. Because these vipers are the highly respectable kind. Well, we shall see who gets bitten in Act 3 shortly. Diamond cut diamond, said the playwright John Ford in a 17th century drama called The Lover's Melancholy. And we seem to be setting up just such a confrontation. Is Mrs. Harriet Truesdale about to be swindled out of her diamond mine? The odds would seem to be against the little lady. But most of the smart money also bet on Goliath against David. Now, who is our man going to be, John? A fellow named Harry, the actor. Oh, yeah? Well, he is an actor. He's down on his luck. And an actor is what we need. Someone who knows how to play a part. Well, when can he be here? I'm going to Sadler's Gulch this afternoon to talk with him. Well, Harry? I call me Professor Napier. I must begin to live the part. Uh, uh, Napier, a uh, professor from <clears throat> South Africa. A geologist. Uh, an expert in diamonds. Oh, yes. I have studied up on the field. Good. Uh, now, uh, <clears throat> what do you want me to tell her about the uh, diamonds? I want you to say they're worthless. Uh, well, that's a problem. <laughs> Our husband was a geologist. He convinced her that they were valuable stones. Perhaps. But... You are Professor Napier, world-famous expert. But she still owns them. And if they're worthless, <laughs> why do you want them? Why do you want the title to her claim? All you have to do is convince her that the diamonds are worthless. And I will do the rest. Well, you're the producer and director of this little drama. How soon can you be ready? Just give me another day to read up on diamonds and become an expert. <laughs> You asked me to come here, Mr. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please, please, Mrs. Trudale, sit down. Now, first, I want you to verify that your property is still here, still intact. Please examine the sack and count the stones. It all looks to be in order. Yes, everything is here. Uh, may I put it all back? Well, of course. Uh, Mrs. Truesdale, uh, Mary Lou said you'd be here. Uh, this telegram arrived for you. Oh, for me? Yeah, the stagecoach driver brought it from Sadler's Gulch. Oh, dear Mrs. Truesdale, I shall arrive in dry well on Tuesday the 18th. That's tomorrow. That's wonderful. Signed, Edmund Napier. The fabulous Edmund Napier. At last, I'm going to meet him. Uh, Mrs. Truesdale? Professor Napier. Ah, uh, you're just what I imagine. Just as poor Bobby described you. And you, Professor? You look the way I had imagined, too. Oh, really? <laughs> How? You look like a man who would sacrifice everything for love. Uh. Well, you flatter me. Uh, but you must tell me everything about Bobby. We never met face to face, but we wrote so much and said so much to each other. I felt we were such good and close friends. Well, there isn't much to say, Professor. He simply couldn't think of anything besides diamonds. Yes, I know, I know. I'm that way myself. See, he was looking for a certain type of terrain, certain weather conditions, and he found the correct combination, stake to claim, and then we just came upon them. 
a field of diamonds. Oh. But a pair of uh, desperados came across the trail. They attacked him and uh, and killed him. Oh, no. But they didn't notice me. But I had Bobby's gun. And, uh... I really can't talk about it anymore. Well, I'm sure you've been asked this question before, but what are your plans? I want to go back east. I shall sell the mine. I will accept your word for the value. I wish I could just walk away and forget about it, but it's all I have in the world. I understand. When shall you start your appraisal? My dear, there is no time like the present. Professor Mabia. Well, Mr. Manning. What is it, Professor? What do you have to say? My dear, do you have all the letters I wrote to Bobby? No, not all. Well, then perhaps you may not be aware that I kept writing over and over again that I simply could not believe diamonds could be found on the North American continent. Oh, but Bobby insisted... Well, in North America, you do not have the same calcareous deposits. Uh, You do not have the identical clay masses necessary for the formation of... But Bobby said... Yes, Bobby. Uh, You couldn't talk him out of it. Now, look here. These are diamonds. It's true that they could shine more brilliantly, but that's all a matter of just cutting the facets. You know that. But these aren't diamonds. Well, what are they then? Well, my dear, they're almost diamonds. Almost? Perhaps that is why poor Bobby was fooled. Almost diamonds? These, all of these are what is known as bought. What? Yes, bought Impure crystals. They cannot be used for jewelry. They unfortunately have no value. No, they are diamonds. They are diamonds. Please say they're diamonds. Yes, I would give anything to be able to say that they were, Mrs. Truesdale. And Bobby... Poor Bobby. He he died for nothing. For nothing. Mrs. Truesdale, where are you going? (laughs) <laughs> Harry, Harry the actor You've never done a better job in your life, I wager Where did you learn all about diamonds? I don't know the first thing about diamonds, Mr. Manning I just read some of the patter Remarkable <laughs> Well, what happens now? Now, I will have to do a little acting myself <laughs> We don't have to give her anything. Why, Joe, of course we do. Otherwise, she'll walk away with the stones and the deed to the field. But if they're supposed to be phony, why should we want to buy them? Won't she smell a rat? Not this rat. She's going to be very well perfumed. She's coming in now. Now, you take your cues from me. Good evening, Miss Trudale. Good evening. Please, please sit down. Miss Trudale. Thank you. I... I had a most terrible shock. Yes, I can imagine. I suppose I always knew deep down that there couldn't be any diamonds. Now, Miss Trudale, don't say that. I thought I was a wealthy woman. I had all those diamonds. But I have nothing... How am I going to pay my bill? Oh, now, you just forget about it. No, I'm sorry. I can't. I'm back in the real world now. You say you have nothing, Miss Tuesday? No. Nothing but the clothes on my back. Oh, no. You have more. Do I? Yes. You have the sack of diamonds that are even now reposing in my safe. You also own the fields in which they were found. Worthless crystals in barren desert. Now, you never know. They have no value to anyone. It might be to me and uh, and uh, to Mr. Selleck here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, perhaps we might buy them from you. No. No, thank you. Well, why not? It's a business proposition. It isn't business. It's charity, and you know it. 
Mrs. Truesdale, you let me put all my cards on the table. I'm not sure I believe this Napier fellow. Why not? Well, your husband was also a geologist. He was convinced the place contained diamonds. But Napier examined these. They weren't real. That was his opinion. Bobby thought differently. Yes, poor Bobby. And I have to choose between an American Bobby Truesdale and this foreigner, Edmund Napier. Uh, why don't we get another opinion? No, I don't think so. But why? I just want to get away from it. I hate it. I hate diamonds. The whole idea. Then sell it to us. We're willing to take a chance. Oh, please. We're serious. Here. We'll give you five thousand. Five thousand? Make it ten. Ten thousand dollars? And go back home where you belong. Back east. Yeah, and teach music. You'll meet another fine young man. Oh, please. I think I'm going to cry. Why are you so good to me? Hello there, Mary Lou. Oh, sure is. Is Joe Selleck around? No, he went off into the desert somewhere inspecting a claim. We've got to get together a posse. Both Carlin and Squint are also at it again. Oh, no, you're, you're making a mistake. Bud and Squint are dead. They were killed, oh, let's see, a, a week and a half ago. Oh, yeah? Then how could they have held up the stagecoach last night? Well, that can't be, Sheriff. Is John Manning about? I got bad news for him, too. Well, John's off with Joe Silly. Well, it was his cash that Bud and Squint robbed off the coach. John's in the desert with Joe Silly. They're partners in a claim. But if Bud... Carling and Squint Olson are alive, well, then... Then... Hey, Lou, what you mumbling about? Well, then they didn't kill her husband, which means she told us all a lie. And if that's true, well, then... Then maybe that whole story about the diamonds. What diamonds? Well, see, this young lady, she came in here about two, three weeks ago and says her husband was bushwhacked by Carling and Olson, and she shot them both. What lady? Well, she told us all this story about a, a diamond mine. Diamonds? Uh-huh. A blonde lady? That's right. A very pretty lady? Oh, beautiful lady. Why, that is Diamond Dotty. Who? She's been working that swindle all throughout the Southwest. She has? Sure, she gets herself a bag full of phony diamonds, and she spends this yarn about a diamond mine. She does? Why, in the past two years, she must have made herself a $100,000 easy. How much did Joe and John buy for? Oh, here, $10,000. My goodness, how can grown man fall for such a swindle? Everybody knows there ain't no diamond mines in Arizona. Oh. <laughs> Mary Lou, what are you laughing at? Oh, sure. <laughs> sure, dear, I thought folks might give a poor lady something from the goodness of their hearts. You just went and restored my flickering faith in human nature. <laughs> Rather extreme and cynical view. But after all, Mary Lou lived in rather extreme and cynical times. What's the biblical saying? I was a stranger and ye took me in. Sometimes that happens all too literally. Well, you and I, we're not strangers. And we shall meet again shortly. the glitters isn't gold and everything that sparkles doesn't always turn out to be a diamond either they say you can't cheat an honest man but the problem is where can you find one Diogenes prowled the streets of Athens incessantly with a lamp vainly trying to encounter him the truth of the matter if there is a little bit of good even in the worst of us then there has to be just a tiny bit of bad even in the best of us. Our cast included Terry Keane, Carol Titel, Earl Hammond, and Bernard Grant. 
the entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Pin him down. <laughs> but his type is like mercury. Quicksilver. He kept smiling and nodding his head. Suddenly, I realized he wasn't listening to me. So I started listening to myself. Do you know what I sounded like? A bitter, frustrated, middle-aged woman. And I ran out of there at 2 o'clock in the morning. I got in my car and started to drive. I had to get away quickly. Do you know why? You wanted to kill him. I saw myself killing him. I saw him lying dead at my feet. And when I was walking down to Cater and reached Howell, I turned my head to the right. And there he was. Lying dead on the pavement, just as if I had wished him there. And that's what happened. It was just as you had diagnosed. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by White Westinghouse Appliance Company. <laughs> <laughs> 